Hello everyone. So our ferrets can play to their heart's content, can explore the deepest, darkest cave of your couch, and even snuggle on occasion. But what can't they do? Today we dive into that. There are two easter eggs in this video, one towards the middle of the video and one at the end. Also, while it's still on my mind, we're at 221 subscribers. What should we do to celebrate 250? Let me know. What comes after a hiss? What comes after a growl? With dogs, we know there's normally a bark after a growl, and with cats, there's sometimes a slight screech and some sort of panic with the cat. But what about with ferrets? Well, normally what happens is that once a ferret has hissed, another ferret has been tackled, and playtime has been in session. But that's not where our story ends. See, because ferrets are the domesticated version of the European polecat, and you might think that ferrets can do everything that a European polecat can do. However, that's not true. A very big thank you to Carla from Frolicking Ferrets, as she has supplied the footage for me. I had tried looking this up about the sound that polecats make, but I couldn't find anything. I tried googling this earlier today, but what came up was actually the video by Frolicking Ferrets where I get the footage from. In an article titled Legal Weasels by Erica Matilich, which will be linked in the description, it says ferrets are also considered domestic from a biological standpoint. Domestic ferrets, unlike their wild cousins, have poor vision, differential DNA, skeletal differences, size differences, and reproductive difficulties. Again, that will be linked in the description where that came from. Perhaps ferrets lost this when they became domesticated because they didn't need to use this. This seems like mostly something that would be used to warn off predators. But our domesticated ferrets, they were mostly in the household where the only enemy they would face would be the rat that is not already dead from them catching it. However, I can't say for certain. And things like this, they make me want to try and get a research grant from some company and actually go out and research this so that I can learn more about our ferrets. So this poses a few interesting questions. Why can't ferrets make this noise? Can hybrids make this noise? And why is there so little documentation on this noise? Thank you for watching the video. If you liked the video, please do leave a like on the video as that helps out a great deal. Also, if you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, leave them down in the comment box. Also, if you happen to own a sugar glider, chinchilla, ferret, or any other pet like a fish that can be considered a small buddy, or little buddy, I should say, then you should check out the subreddit r slash little buddies. There'll be a link popped up here and a link in the description for you to check out. It's there so that you can post pictures of your little buddies and also learn about other little buddies. It's been a fascinating experience, although full disclosure, I've been posting there for a while, but I was recently promoted to moderator, so I am slightly biased to the subreddit. But it is a very fun experience and you should check it out. And as always, I hope you have a nice day.